Hello and welcome. We are back for a brand new series of All Things Royal on Talk TV. So, pop the kettle on. This is The Royalty. I'm Sarah Hewson. Coming up on today's show, the Invictus Games return, which means Harry and Meghan are back in the limelight. But has a lack of support from other royals cast a shadow over the event? Plus, find out which country has immortalised the late Queen in stamp form. Joining me to discuss all of that and lots more, a royal correspondent, Rupert Bell, and royal commentator and talk TV regular, Afia Hagen. First, though, let's join The Sun's royal editor, Matt Wilkinson, who's in Dusseldorf, where the Invictus Games are being held. Matt, it is great to see you. Tell us what the atmosphere is like there this year. Well, it is, it is a great atmosphere generally here. I mean, the, the athletes are all mingling with each other. There's a great party, there's drinks, there's food. Um, first couple of days, it was reasonably quiet, but they had some school children here. They've had lots of army soldiers coming in. And obviously, we've, the atmosphere goes through the roof once Harry and Meghan arrive, particularly when Meghan arrive. But when they are in uh, any of the actual uh, stadium events, there's, there's, there's tons of people wanting to come around for selfies and people wanting to interact with the Duke and Duchess, get pictures with them and chat to them. So, yeah, it, it's a good atmosphere, but it really cranks up a level when the uh, Duke and Duchess of, of, of Sussex suddenly appear. Does it feel to you like we're seeing the old Harry back? Definitely. Um, look, it, it's hard to describe, but it's not just the old Harry. It's, it's a more relaxed and comfortable Harry. And also he's kind of more relaxed and comfortable with the media being around him. Before we would see him grumpy, not wanting to engage with uh, anyone when when photographers are around. But he sees us here. Um, he sees if you see him with the young people, with the children. That's what he used to do when he was a, when he was a working prince. That's why we all loved him. He would be out there interacting with the youngsters, you know, touching them. He would be on his hands on the shoulder, cheering them on, pulling faces, joining in the fun, being quite childish. And that's what we're seeing here. And he knows we're watching. Um, he knows it looks great, and I think he's actually enjoying it. I mean, I wonder if they're feeling a little bit more confident at the moment, whether or they're, they're putting on a more kind of confident front, but particularly Harry. I hate to think that he's going back to exactly like he was as a royal, because he doesn't want to be that, doesn't want to go back to how he exactly was like a working royal, but he's definitely working from that framework that, that was so successful many years ago. And Matt, what about Meghan? She arrived a few days into the event. How do you think she is and them as a couple? Because we've obviously had so many rumours about the state of their relationship and how they both are. What's your assessment? Well, look, the Invictus Games is, is, is Prince Harry's baby. It's his game. But this week is about rebrands for Meghan Markle. Uh, we haven't seen her for, for a year, really, have we? We haven't actually seen them actually going out and do anything interesting. But this is about getting her pictured. Um, getting her profile higher. I think we're going to get some projects about Meghan announced at the end of the year. So this is about her looking good, coming out, smiling, being happy. The pair of them, I thought was interesting, was that the first couple of days when before Meghan was here, Harry would be hanging out with some of his male friends that work for the Invictus Games. So Dave Wiseman and JJ Chambers, they would be sitting together, having some fun. But now he's with Meghan. They're always hand in hand. Um, whenever they're walking around, he's, he's often got his hand on her back or she, she, I remember she was rubbing his um, back at one stage during one of the, one of the sports. They're, they're, they're constantly together. They, look, they know that we've all been discussing whether their marriage you know, is about to break up. They are aware of all the reports that have been going around. So by coming here and putting on a proper united front, not hiding away from the media, but holding hands and joining in together, going to engage together, and the, the relay race, I don't know if you saw that just the other day, where they were both cheering on different teams, it felt like a, a couple that were in love. And I'm interested, Matt, to get your perspective on the reports that some of the veterans taking part in the Games have been feeling a bit frustrated that perhaps the rift between Harry and his family is casting a shadow and preventing the royal family from coming out and vocalising their support for the Games and the athletes. What, what do you make of that? I've not really heard that here. I've seen social media reports. I think there's been some veterans that have, that have known Harry in the past that have said that it's a shame that members of the royal family haven't actually come out in support of the Invictus Games. And I think in fairness, I'd like to be fair, that they haven't been involved in the Invictus Games since 2014. And look, I don't see Harry talking about the Earthshot Prize. Okay, I don't see him talking about Kate's um, uh, Kate's projects for the for the for the early fives. But the 
family rift overshadows everything that Harry does. So everything they've done in the past three years is always caveated with, but he's warring with his brother, he's writing stories about his father in, in, in spare. They're trying to move on. OK, we, we've asked them for so many years to say you just need to move on and, and get your kind of new life and enjoy your enjoy your new projects in California. I get the impression they're trying to move on here. And this 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 show of unity as a couple and actually working uh, you know, with, with, with families and children is it, their way of doing it. It, it overshadows. Um, it does overshadow the Invictus Games to a certain extent. But I think once you actually get into these venues and see Harry and interacting with all the servicemen, they're just really, really happy that, that, that he's here and he's supporting them. Thanks a lot, Matt. Great to see you. Uh, now, Rupert and Afia, uh, the Invictus Games are a massive event. Prince Harry's baby. Yeah. What does this mean to him? Afia. Oh, this is everything to Prince Harry. You know, he's been working on this since 2014, since he saw the Warrior Games in the US. He's working on it with the Royal Foundation. This really is his passion. It's a passion project for him. It's something that he thought he'd maybe do a few of, but it's really taken on a life of its own. And this is where we see Prince Harry at his absolute best. You know, it's quite laid back actually. It's a really loud, mm. raucous atmosphere. He pops up at all, any and all of the events. He's always supporting all the teams. He's really enthusiastic. This literally is his baby. You've absolutely nailed it. And, and it's for the one legacy project that he had from his time as a working royal that he's managed to maintain really, isn't it, Rupert? Uh, and, it, and this, I think, because we know from his time in Afghanistan and as an ex-serviceman, this is in his DNA. And this is when we saw him at his very best. And you can see when he's interacting with service personnel from all around the world, how, because he can understand what they're going through. He's been it, he's been on the front line, he's seen horrible situations as, we, as he revealed it in the documentary. And I, that's why I think we should applaud his every effort when it comes to the Invictus Games. And he, he gets eyeballs on it. And you can see how energised he is with it. You actually saw him being energised when he came back to the World Child um, Award ceremony as well. The things that he's been long-standing, and actually what you realise is how much the royal family miss him. Yeah. Because when he's on song, my goodness me, he's a force for good. And that's what you were seeing uh, this week and that well child evening. Of course, it was overshadowed as the anniversary of the Queen's death. But when he goes there, by all accounts, everyone just wanted a piece of him. And what about the Megan factor, at uh, Rupert? Arriving a few days into the game, straight into it with, with a speech, apologising for being a bit late to the party. I, I mean... What kind of reception do you think I, she's had? I don't think she needed to apologise for being late because I think absolutely it was right that Harry was there yeah. first up. She didn't need to apply. We all knew that that was going to happen. I mean, I suppose it was her just sort of trying to engage and saying, I'm sorry, I'm, but, you know, how the thing's going on. Well, that's fine. You know, we knew this is Harry's sort of raison d'etre and this is why he does look so happy. It's when he's away from this environment mm. that suddenly he starts to look like a bit of a lost soul. This is really what gets him going. And the Invictus yeah. Games, World Child and other things, but actually he's yet then outside of these to find that sense of purpose that gives him that energy. And it's really interesting using that sense of purpose because that's exactly what he designed the Invictus Games to do for those injured service yeah. personnel who found themselves no longer able to do the job that they had trained for, mm -hmm. lost yeah. and not knowing which direction they were heading in. But, yeah. but on Meghan, um, a, a fear, I, I mean, I was flicking through the papers uh, this morning and... Wherever Meghan goes, and no matter what she does, there is criticism, isn't Absolutely. there? And, Absolutely. And, and some pretty much unwarranted, I, I would say. I agree with you, uh, Rupert, that she was late, but that was always the plan, and yep. she was looking after the children. And there was some criticism, well, why couldn't she get other people to look after the children? If Kate does that... She's we her. It. Exactly. This is the thing with Megan, is that there's a certain section of people that she cannot do right for doing wrong with them. If Megan had turned up with Harry at the very beginning, she's overshadowing it. Mm. If she hadn't come at all, oh, she couldn't be bothered to support him. She came a bit late, why was she looking after the children? She has people to do that. Look, at the end of the day, She's there, and the Megan effect is real. Let's talk about that. I mean, look at the J. Crew cardigan that she wore, crashed the site. 
I tried to get myself one. <laughs> Still waiting. Still refreshing. Do you know what I mean? You'll find it popping up on eBay. I, it yeah. will for thousands of dollars. You know, she looks great, but people want to see her, you know? They want to shake hands with her, take selfies, chat with her. The both of them are hugely popular, but you're absolutely right, is that there's just such a barrage of unwanted criticism. On the fashion, sorry, Rupert. Okay. I mean, I might, <laughs> I might give this one to a fear. Right, yeah. <laughs> if you don't That's mind. Right. Right. <laughs> um, this rebrand of, of Megan yeah. with her new talent agents and how she presents herself, there's an awful lot of thought that will have gone yeah. into the way in which she presents herself. Yeah, here. definitely. And, and, you know, she's been quite casual. She's yeah. been in very neutral colours, yeah. not taking the limelight, not overshadowing Harry yeah. or the athletes. All of that, I'm assuming, is, is very deliberate yeah. here. All yeah. of it is very well thought out. You know, the, the J. Crew sweater and the shorts that she wore yesterday, we know that she likes a shorts suit, but they were very quick to tell us that, you know, it's kind of a, a brand that is, that's accessible and the jumper, that she's, they're telling us that things are being reworn, uh, that things are vintage, you know, the Cartier watch that she always wears. Uh, and then when we saw her in the black, with the, I think it was Hermes trainer she was wearing, but then later on, same outfit, but with heels and hair down for the evening, matching black with Harry. It's always very well thought out. Her Invictus fashion has always been top drawer. You know, where it's the jeans and the white shirt. That or, very first exactly. event when she was introduced to the world as Harry's yeah. girlfriend. Yeah, or last year when she was in the lovely sort of knitwear high neck top with the wide leg trousers. She, I mean, she looks amazing in everything. But I think also is what, I think people didn't expect is like I said, the Megan effect, that when she wears something similar with Kate, people want it immediately. People will refresh that site. I've got someone upstairs seeing it for me now to try and get those items. That effect is still there, but you're right. That rebranding um, that she she's doing her own hair and makeup and looks great, you know. Um, her there was a bit of a incredible. bit of chat about that on social media though, yeah. wasn't there? Like, why do we need to know that she's doing her hair and makeup, big deal when you're in a room full of these athletes who've, you know, overcome quite a lot more than doing but, their own hair and makeup. But this is the thing, isn't it? If she had had a hair and makeup team, yes. people would be like, why is she travelling with a hair and makeup team? And I think as part of that rebrand, they just wanted people to know that, look, on this trip, she's there for Harry. She is doing her own hair and makeup. I think it was part of that rebrand, people. To make her more relatable. Exactly. But of course, it's just out, people. It's going to come across the wrong way. But can oh. I, I'm not going to talk about what the fashion. fashion. <laughs> not, what did you like that she wore, Rupert? I hadn't, I'm not interested. <laughs> <Hadn't> <laughs> That's it, probably it, the point. It, it, it gla <laughs> glazed over me, but the, uh, the, the fashion side, um, because the obsession with what Kate wears and, and uh, Meghan wears, that sort of. I lose the will to live at times when it, <laughs> all that that. But the more important thing is her turning up late was actually a sensible move mm. because West we'd had all the Harry photographs, but actually once you see him going to yet another event, it's sort of you know we know the way the world works. Yeah. Right, we've seen that. Well, what's new? Yeah. You know, it's him glad handing some more athletes, however worthy each athlete may be. Megan turning up suddenly we're back talking about the Invictus Games again, yeah. mm. and so therefore yeah. from a in Victor's Games' perspective, it's perfect. It's that sprinkling what, of stardust yeah, again. Whatever yeah, she's yeah. wearing, it, okay, if that's got, is, is a sideshow as far as I'm concerned, because I want to see the Invictus Games attracting the right sort of awareness of what it's about. Absolutely. And if it means that she's wearing a nice J. Crew sweater. Well done. Then, he got it right. Um, away you go, <laughs> and it gets people talking about the Invectus Games. Exactly. Rupert, what about the lack of attention from members of the royal family? And some suggestions, <coughs> although Matt's saying that he hasn't heard that where he is in, in Dusseldorf, but perhaps some suggestion that there's a bit of disappointment among the UK team that they haven't been getting those shout outs from other members of the royal family. Well, I think. Basically, because they don't, the, the breakdown in communications is so real that they mm -hmm. don't feel that they want, for whatever reason, to offer the support. And I suppose it's come just after a year after the, the Queen died. But yes, I suppose in previous years, I'm sure there would have been a 
would might have been a shout out from William wishing yeah. his brother gr success. So yeah. I oh, do really think there it has been. since 2014, mm -hmm. particularly and since the beginning of it. And that's such a shame, isn't it? Because you know the Invictus Games were started with the Royal Foundation, which you know William and Kate, the Prince and Princess of Wales, were part of. And you're right, they haven't given a, a shout out since 2014. And when you look at the history of of veterans and people who have served in the armed forces, the royal family have served in the armed forces. So many of them have. And I think it would be lovely for them. It's it's not about supporting Prince Harry and Meghan Markle mm -hmm. or the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. It's about supporting Team UK. Their the argument that have is gone. they don't get involved in each other's projects, for example. Yeah. But I, I do hear your point. I, I want to move on, though, um, now to talk about the other members of the royal family and their engagements. And we had the Princess of Wales paying a visit to addiction services in a prison in Surrey this week, high down at prison. Uh, she was checked by Penny, a black Labrador, as she followed security protocols uh, at HMP High Down near Banstead to gain an understanding of the procedures followed by those visiting inmates. Um, these were quite fascinating pictures, I thought, uh, Ruth. She, she was almost like trying to hold in a, a sort of uncomfortable smirk, I think, or, or, you know, a giggle as she was sitting there very upright being checked out well, by the doll. We seem to be more obsessed with uh, her trampolining act. Plaster on her finger, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think it, it shows that they, they're not shirking where they go and, and try and find out, you know, particularly when you think of the week we'd had the big incident in London and the, someone breaking out of prison, then you're bringing, drawing mm -hmm. the prison community in the focus on what's going on in prison. So for her to, to get once out there and, and go to something that may be a little bit more uncomfortable, not just a sort of safe pair of hands, and that's actually what we've been seeing. They're all trying to sort of stretch the boundaries a bit. You know, Invictus Games is a pretty edgy thing. You know, we see some of the people who take part in that. So going to prisons, and, and obviously, the, I, and I think that shows that they want to be seen, that they are not frightened of getting out there to things that might be a little bit more uncomfortable for members of the royal family to visit. And meanwhile, we had her husband, the Prince of Wales, going to a construction site this week, again on the yeah. theme of mental health awareness, talking about the rates of suicide within the construction industry, which I had no idea, yeah. three times the national average. I think the latest figures, 507 uh, construction workers in 2021 killed themselves. That's almost two a day. That's really shocking. And when Prince William was there, he talked about mental fitness when he was talking with the different people he was talking to there. Um, they've got, a, I think, an organisation called Mates in Mind that encourages the people on the construction site to talk to each other. I mean, when you think about it, it's a really highly pressurised, very physical environment. They've got deadlines, you know, some of them on temporary contracts, so perhaps worrying about where they're going next. And I think you're absolutely right, Rupert, that it is the responsibility of members of the royal family, you know, of everyone actually, to raise awareness about things that do shock us. I too was shocked mm. to hear about these statistics. And I'm really glad actually that Prince William picked this particular charity. He was with Mace, the construction company, went there, was talking to them, and raising awareness about this issue. Really. Yeah, and, and the message really was mental health support needs to be there as a preventative measure rather than yeah. a kind of crisis management when, when things get really, really uh, serious. So, yeah, a, a really important engagement uh, for him this week. Before we move on, uh, don't forget to make sure you like and subscribe if you don't want to miss a single episode of The Royal Tea. But moving on to the King, he has met school pupils and seen firsthand the efforts to breathe new life into a village in Scotland. King Charles visited Tom and Tool during his summer break at the Balmoral Estate in nearby Aberdeenshire. His itinerary included a new £3.3 million energy efficient housing project, which it's hoped will revitalise the village. And he was again wearing a kilt made from the King Charles III tartan, which was first seen in public a couple of weeks ago. So let's um, talk about these engagements. This particular uh, town that he visited, uh, Rupert, had really suffered from economic decline. There's been major efforts to revitalise the economy there. Well, the rural economy um, t takes a battering all over the place, and that's mm. the one thing the King has always been aware of, 
because of his links to the, uh, to the countryside and his passion for all things uh, rural, this is part of it, is how do you make rural communities thrive? And obviously it's not next door getting to the Balmoral estate and they probably do find it hard, but that is why he's trying to make an impact with Balmoral and the surrounding area and it's typical of him with, to be involved in something and, it, and I'm sure he would have overseen or heard about and read every detail of what was going on and quietly put in his uh, pennyworth, as it were, as to what needs to be done because we've seen what he's been able to do in the rural communities and I'm sure Balmoral and the surrounding area will benefit from his, from his input to the, to the good of all. Yeah, and one of the engagements was looking at affordable but energy efficient housing mm. uh, affair, a topic very close to his heart. Extremely close to his heart. You know, he's been talking about climate change and sustainability for years, even when it wasn't trendy to do so. And obviously now that he's king, he has to remain apolitical. But this was something that when he was Prince Charles, he was very, very passionate about campaigning about, something that Prince William has taken up as well with the Earthshot Prize. So I think it's brilliant that he was there um, encouraging and, and supporting this uh, energy efficient building of homes that we talked about as well um, so yeah you know the people there were like he's our he's our neighbor you know mm -hmm. um, Balmoral's and Royal Deeside which is in Aberdeenshire and so they were like yeah you know it's great that he's come to visit us we are a neighboring community and we do need his support it's also very important for the king um, to have Scotland on side we know that popularity for the monarchy and the royal family in Scotland is lower than the rest of the country it's about 39 percent uh, that was in polls like around May time, around the time of the mm -hmm. coronation. So he has work to do, certainly, and engagements like this will help with him getting up his popularity ratings. Three days of engagements in Scotland, but you think he's got quite an important engagement a bit further south well, on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, but I think he has. Uh, it's a St Ledger. I can talk comfortably about this. I can't <laughs> do the fashion that we were talking about earlier, but I'm on safe ground here <laughs> okay, with good. horse racing uh, because there was a lot of talk when the Queen died. What would happen to the the racing interests and her passion, would the king and queen follow on? Well, many ways, the king always said, well, it was the queen's parade, I'm never going to rain on it when it came to racing. Well, the good thing is he had a royal winner. Well, on Saturday, he's presumably taking a helicopter from an early morning engagement in Scotland to go to Doncaster to watch Desert Hero, and it would be remarkable uh, if he was to win the uh, St Ledger, which is the final classic of the season, he's going with the queen, they are passionate, that they were energised by and really enjoyed Royal Ascot and being part of it and, and in being seeing everyone enjoying it but also more importantly owning a winner and I know that he's even will start ringing up trainers and saying oh, great my horse won and no one thought that was going to happen mm. so hopefully Desert Hero about third favorite will back up his Royal Ascot win and give um, him a classic winner in his first year the Queen won this race in her silver jubilee year <laughs> with Dunfermline. See, I know much more about racing yeah. than do fashion. Yeah, you do, but your tips, <laughs> I will say, your tips at Royal Ascot were terrible. Uh, oh, correct, really correct, fun. correct. We did meet up uh, very briefly, uh, but uh, it was... And Sarah won no money because Correct. Of <laughs> but she forgave me. Meanwhile, Italy has a brand new stamp showing Queen Elizabeth II in five different decades of her life. It is extremely rare for the Italian Postal Service to issue a stamp of a non Italian. I think it's only ever been done for popes uh, before. I mean, it is quite a reflection on just how respected she was all over the world. If she's going to get... Italy are going to remember the Queen, it puts her in a, a slightly... Um, the context of what impact she had. Mm -hmm. If they felt that it was they needed to do it for Italy, uh, it, it just is a further sort of reflection on just what a significant figure yeah. she was globally and mm -hmm. everyone felt touched by her along the way. Now, Italy, to do this, um, as you say, popes, yes, but that doesn't feel very surprising. No. Um, but the Queen, that is definitely surprising and, and fair play to the Italians. Yeah. Yeah, an Italian spokesperson said the Italian people, like others and more than others, admired her and also knew her for the affection she has always had for culture, history and in general for our people in whom she often found comfort at all stages of her life. Queen Elizabeth II was deeply admired. And talking of the Queen, it is, of course, a year since she died last week brought back a lot of, of memories for, for everyone, mm. uh, including us. Yeah. Um, where did your thoughts go to on, on that day, looking back on <clears throat> that incredibly 
turbulent time. 12 was, months ago. It was incredibly, incredibly intense. Mm. But what I remember is, um, you know, we just come through a period of intensity through the summer with our Prime Minister. Liz Truss had just become Prime Minister. It felt like, you know, perhaps we were coming to the end of a turbulent time and then the Queen passes away. And it was just an incredibly intense, mm. exhausting 10, 11 days of broadcasting. There was just so many moments, I think, you know, for me, um, broadcasting outside Canada Gate in the pouring rain and seeing the Queen's body coming back to Buckingham Palace will stay with me for a long time. Um, you know, broadcasting on the day of her funeral, just, there's just so many moments. Mm. But I just remember how exhausted I was at the end of it, how long it took to recover and how intense those 10 days were, incredible. It was also that feeling, Rupert, of uncertainty. I mean, uh, Fia talked about that we'd had this very uncertain time in politics, the handover of power. I'd been up to Balmoral uh, to see Boris Johnson head out, Liz Truss come in and the Queen conducting that <coughs> final duty. Um, and that feeling of, well, well, what next? Mm -hmm. Because we had, most of us had never known any other monarch. Uh, and yes, and I think we were all thinking, how's the King going to cope with it? Mm. Well, apart from Pengate, I think he's done all right. Uh, um, and you can understand during those 10-day period, steady hand on the tiller, he's just tried to make sure now we're into the second year of his reign, he can probably let the air out of the balloon a little bit because he's very... And, as you say, there has been so much going on. <laughs> Prime ministers seem to be changing, you know, we're changing every week it's at like that time. It's like a revolving time. door in so Downing Street. you actually think, right, we need a period of calm. The royal family are having to regroup in the modern era and work out where they're going. The king knows he's got to make sure that the monarchy is fit for purpose for William whenever that means, because he's basically a short-term tenant, if you see what I mean. The just caretaker because of his... king. Yeah, and that's... Mm. But so far, so good. So reflecting on the year, yes, we're not unsure, but actually, overall, he's done all right. Great to hear from you. Great to see you again and fantastic to be back here with the royalty. That is all we've got time for this week. My thanks to Afia, Rupert and Matt in Dusseldorf. And if you want to join in the debate, make sure you leave a comment. We'll be back again next week with all the latest on the royal family. Thank you for watching today and we hope you can join us again. See you then.